Hey, you scholars, good to be back with you. And in this lesson, I want to go over the marching grid algorithm. Now, marching grid has been around approximately forever. Uh, it's uh, useful in a range of different problems, but we're interested in applying it to problems of optimization. We're going to use it to find the minimum value of an objective function. It's got a couple of properties that make it really good as an educational tool, although that isn't that practical for uh, problems outside the classroom. One is it's very easy to describe, it's easy to implement, it's extremely robust, it will always find you an answer. Now the problem is it's not very efficient. Think of it as kind of like a bulldozer. You don't necessarily want to commute to work on a bulldozer, but boy, you're going to get there. That's, the, that's marching grid, basically, in, in concept. Here's how it works. Let me start with a 2D, two-variable objective function. And I'll draw something that looks kind of like the, the Rosenbrock banana function here. I'll just call that x and that y. And maybe I have a, a, uh, an objective function that looks kind of like this. This looks akin to the Rosenbrock banana function that appears everywhere in the optimization world. And it also uh, appears in Appendix B of our textbook, Fundamentals of Optimization. So there's what it looks like. And we, we're going to find the uh, minimum right there eventually. But we don't know what the objective function looks like. That's the whole point. If we knew what the objective function looked like, we wouldn't have a problem. And as always, we're trying to find that, that point in design space. Now design space is these two dimensions. The third dimension is the value of the objective function. And I'm representing it on this 2D board with a uh, contour line. It's kind of like a topographical map if you're a hiker. So I have this objective function. Here's design space. I want to march through design space in some hopefully intelligent way so that I get from wherever I started to here in some predictable, robust, repeatable, implementable way. Implementable is a word. Because I don't know where that is, let's say I started up here. Okay, that's my starting point. Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to do is, as you might guess, I'm going to draw a grid. I'm going to get that line out of your way here. There, maybe that, that can be our starting point. Let's we'll point to it. I'm going to draw a grid. And it's got nine points on it. One, two, three, four, got five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to draw that grid. And then I'm going to calculate the objective function at all nine of those points. Then I'm going to move the center of the grid to that lowest value point. Okay, look at all these. That one right there is my, is my lowest value point. I've crossed the most number of contour lines with that. Okay? That's pretty clearly the minimum value of the objective function. So I'm going to move the grid. All right. And then I'm going to do it again. I've already got four of the points, so I'm going to calculate the new ones right there. Again, it looks to me like it could be that one, could be that one. I'm not sure. Just the way I've got it, I'm going to guess that's my new center. So here's my next grid. Okay. There's some more points. And that looks like that's probably my minimum now. So there, my nine points are now those. Well, this was my center. If I check, I may find out that either this is the center or this is the center. Let's say this is the center, and I'll move one more. Okay. Now, the one that was my center is still the lowest point. The grid has stopped moving. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that the minimum lies within the grid. Where within the grid? We don't know. We don't know where inside the grid. We just know that it's in the grid. So what do you do? You either stop. If the, if the grid is small enough, you don't care. You can just stop. If the grid is large, and it probably needs to be large at the beginning so that the grid will move fairly quickly, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to shrink the grid. Let's shrink it by a factor of two. This will be my new grid. I'm going to go kind of put this in red. I'll go all multimedia on you here. There's my new grid. Okay. Now I start moving this around using this same logic until it stops moving. When it stops moving, I can shrink it again. 
move it around until it stops moving, shrink it again, and keep going until the size of the grid is small enough that I have all the precision I need. I found the uh, minimum value of the objective function as accurately as I need to find it. I will have satisfied my exit criteria, and I stop. That's marching grid. Hey, there's one other thing we may you may find it useful for, other than finding the minimum of an objective function, and that's finding a root of a particularly complex, complicated, I shouldn't say complex, but complicated equation. If you got this, let me move on real quick and just tell you how you would find a root with a minimization algorithm. What, what do those two things have to do with each other? Well, let's say I have a function f of x, y. It doesn't matter what it is. And I want to find, oops, not s, find, find x and y so that f of x, y equals 0. That's root finding. That's root finding. That's what that means. Well, let's say you're not exactly at the, the, the uh, location of the root. Let's say you're somewhere else in this space. In the more general case, this is true. Or that, that's a, that epsilon. That's, epsilon is usually reserved in mathematics for a small value. So that's going to be basically my error, the difference between the function value where I am and 0. OK, well, so what? Well, I could try to make that small, but the problem is a negative epsilon is smaller than zero. Hmm. So I could get far away from the zero point, and I would still be making epsilon smaller. What you do is that. Square that. Redefine this as the difference between the function squared and zero. This number, always positive. If you minimize epsilon, epsilon will eventually go to zero if the function has a root. And by minimizing that function, you're finding the root of that one. So a uh, marching grid can get used for this, as can any optimization routine. Any minimization routine can be used to find the roots of an equation just by doing that. So two for one deal here, guys. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.